Good morning all. Time to add the TTP223 touch sensor switch to my receiver unit so that as well as being able to see humidity and temperature displayed on this display and later on battery voltage and fan current, I want to be able to press this switch and switch the fan on and off in the shed where the transmitter is going to be shed workshop so i think the first thing i need to do is take this connector off because it's no use being on the top i want pins coming out from the bottom so that i can plug it straight into my breadboard and then connect up vcc ground and the signal output pin now i've decided that this should be in toggle mode because given that my radio link is a little bit flaky because it's right on the edge of the distance range um, I've come to the conclusion that I want the switch to definitely toggle at this end and then the transmitter, or at least <laughs> this is the receiver, is sending back in the acknowledgement packet um, a constant one when this is on or a constant zero when this is off. So any lost packets won't really be an issue. So just unsoldering these pins, pulling them out one by one. I have to straighten them first to get the plastic carrier off and now I'm just lifting them out of the board and I think that's done it so now to solder suck these holes with the solder sucker a lot of solder on that one and it feels like lead free it doesn't want to play ball. Mm, maybe some flux on this. And finally solder in the pin array. Just three pins. Using lovely leaded solder. Yes, I think this ground one was difficult because it's got ground spokes and it's sucking the heat away. Okay, that's done. I've got the pin array on the back. Now I'm just going to go to the data sheet now because I want to see what the maximum output current of this chip is uh, so that we can drive an LED and see it working. So this is the TTP223 one key touchpad detector IC. You can run it from 2 volts to 5.5. Uh, what else we get? It's quite low power. It's quite slow. 220 milliseconds at VDD equals 3 volts. Uh, you can also have a direct mode or a toggle mode by pad option and i want a toggle mode now what about the current let's scroll this if it will yes it will just about and uh, the parameter i want is output port sync current is 8 milliamps and output port source current is only 4 milliamps so we could sync the current through an led but I can only drive it uh, at 8 milliamps. I guess we could give that a go. So I need to put power to this thing. So I'm going to get VCC, uh, which is that middle pin there, that one. And I'm going to get it from the nano in there. And I've not got much space in there. There is a ground pin around the back, so I'll get ground from around there. I've got these red wires made up. A bit naughty using red for ground, but needs must let's put it back that way ground is there so that's it powered up in fact let's uh, there's an led on here let's just see what it does well it lights up but it doesn't really uh, do anything in relation to the touch switch so i think it's just an led uh, across vcc and ground so what i need to do is put another led on there but i've got to make sure it doesn't draw more than 8 milliamps. I don't think this would current limit. I think this would just get hot and get cross. So I need the LED to take its feed from VCC. So I can put, oh, that's in the way. Move that. I can put that in the VCC. Uh, I've got a 1K resistor set so at 5 volts. The maximum current is going to be 5 milliamps. So that should be fine. And then I've got to take the other side of that to the signal pin. Let's find a wire. And the result of that is this. So that's working. Now that's in toggle mode. 
And actually this touch sensor module was not originally in touch mode, it was uh, in toggle mode, it was originally in uh, momentary mode. And there's a pin on there where you can set whether it's uh, active high, active low. So you can press it and the LED would come on, or equally you could press it and the LED would go off. But this is in toggle mode, which is another pin on the chip. Let's go back to the data sheet. So on the chip, we've got this AHLB active high or low. Not sure what B is. Uh, so you can pull it one way and it'll be active low. Pull it the other way and it's active high. The default uh, says it's active high. The other one is toggle, which is another pin, pin six. And this one you can either have in toggle mode if you pull that to a one, or if it's a zero, it's in direct mode. So that's momentary mode. So I wanted toggle mode. Um, I noticed on the PCB, pin four and pin six were actually connected together and they went to a resistor which was pulling down to ground, which means we'd have had an active high on the active high or low selection and direct mode. So I'll show you what I did. I don't know whether you can see that, but on U1, the chip, the six pin chip, I've got a solder blob connecting pins six and five. Now you can see that the tracking connects pins six, six and four. Now they are the two mode pins, the active high, active low and the toggle pin. And you can see that they route out via that track over to R1 where there was a pull down resistor. I think it was 1K. So I just melted that off and got rid of it. So they're no longer being pulled down. And you can now see that the solder blob links pin five, which is VCC, to both of those pins. So we're probably in active low mode, but of course in toggle mode, that doesn't really matter because you're toggling from one to the other. So you don't really know which one you're on at any one time. Uh, so yeah, that just now toggles on that TTP223 chip, uh, toggles the SIG signal output pin. And uh, as you can see, that works. Now the bodgery, this sort of solder blob between pins five and six, all of that was necessary because this uh, touch switch module doesn't actually have an implementation with solder pads. Some of them do, where you can actually uh, change the settings for pin six, which was the toggle pin and pin four, which is the active high, active low selection. Because this didn't have it, I had to just fudge it with a blob of solder. But for this module, that's fine. I have ordered actually 10 of a different, they're, they're different color actually, they're red. But I think it looks from the eBay listing like they have the, the pads for setting the active high, active low and toggle. But let's put that in there. And I've noticed it doesn't do anything for a while. I've got a feeling it takes a while for the chip to calibrate itself. But uh, once it has, yeah, that's a nice reliable toggle action. So if you toggle it to that state, then it will just send continuous ones back over the um, the uh, acknowledge, uh, what's it called, payload, back to the transmitter. Um, and of course, if it's in that mode, it will send continuous zeros back to the transmitter. The transmitter will then receive that because for, for the purposes of this switch, the transmitter becomes the receiver. Uh, and turn the fan on off via a relay and Look what I have found, this, a relay module. Uh, it's five volts, but it's a 10 amp relay, I believe. Yeah, 10 amps at 30 volts DC. So that'll be fine for switching the fan on and off. So the final thing here will be to route the signal output of the touch switch into one of the digital pins of the Nano. And I'm thinking perhaps I'll use D2 or something like that. Uh, and then I can send my switch status uh, from this radio to the other radio and trigger the relay. Uh, but that will have to be in the next video. Cheerio.